Hi, we're in a climate crisis. It's vital that we make changes and do our bit. So I thought I'd show some of the little bits I've been doing to hopefully multiply my efforts. Disclaimer, I realize the things I share in this video are not literally going to save the world. These things are random and minuscule and I'm not even entirely sure if everything I do makes any impact at all. Some of my recycling, for example. I just thought this would make a fun and interesting little video, but I do intend to learn more about making greater impact. This video is in no way to shame anyone if you don't do the things that I share in this video. I'm just sharing them because I feel like I should. Sometimes the more sustainable and ethical option can be more expensive. It's not always an option to everyone Everyone and it's not always available to everyone. I don't think we should shame individuals for buying unsustainable to live. We should rather be shaming the largest companies that produce their products unsustainably for profit because it's the massive companies and industries that are doing the most damage to the planet. But we do have the power to vote with our dollars. And so if we can make less harmful choices, we should. But again, not everyone can all the time. I do not consider myself an environmentalist, nor is my channel because there are plenty of things that I still use and buy and do and enjoy that are not sustainable or ethical, usually for financial preference or convenience reasons. So with all that out of the way, let's begin the video. I started filming this video last year, so there's going to be a lot of footage from a while back. So I'm about to take out the recycling and I'm thinking there are so many of these little bags from a recent camera that I bought that came with loads of extra stuff and I think I can reuse these like Ziploc bags definitely can be reused for things and look how many there are. So I'm going to save these, save what I can. They do come in handy for things. It saves me buying them as well. I don't know about these. They don't really have Ziplocs on them so they might have to go in the bin. But yeah, it's a shame you can't really recycle this kind of stuff. But I will recycle everything else that I possibly can. Is my recycle. I literally recycle everything possible. And it's a shame that my GoPro came with this big chunk of plastic on it but I shall recycle the cardboard from it. I'm actually just looking at this and I genuinely think I could probably reuse this as like a little like pen holder or like put something in in the kitchen. Do you know what? I'm gonna try and save this because it does stand up. Makeup brush it. Do you know what? There are tons of things I could put in here so I'm gonna save it. I also do save bubble wrap because I sell things online. Sometimes I have to wrap things up. It's also good I move a lot. So if I have to like wrap, you know, special things so that they don't break. So I do tend to keep that when I find it. Um, but the rest of this can't really be used. Considering, I mean, I think I've managed to recycle and reuse a lot of this packaging, so I'm feeling good about it. A quick word on recycling. In a lot of information I've consumed about recycling, I've learned that a large portion of what we recycle doesn't even end up getting recycled. It instead gets incinerated, unresponsibly exported to other poorer countries, or ends up in landfill. I've linked a Greenpeace article below. I didn't have the time to investigate this in detail, but some of the reasons are simply that many items don't give clear enough instructions on how or whether it's recyclable. Most plastics aren't even recyclable. Then there's mixed materials which can't be recycled either. For example, paper sandwich boxes lined with plastic. These aren't recyclable unless you literally peeled off the plastic. Or sometimes things are just harder to recycle, like these Tetra Pak drink cartons, which are lined with aluminium and plastic. I heard that these often don't actually get recycled, so I contacted my council to ask, and they confirmed that they are not, at least where I was living, which was Tunbridge Wells. I was told I should put them in the bin, so I tried to squish them as small as possible. However, there are some recycling centres that do recycle this particular type of carton, so it's best to check with your council or recycling in your local area. If you're entirely not sure, just put it in the recycling anyway. If you're in the USA, I've linked a website below where you can type in your postcode and it will tell you. The worst way to respond to this information, though, would be to just stop recycling altogether, so please do continue to recycle. It does make a difference. Just make sure you're not putting any of these items on the screen in the general recycling. There are more than this, but these are the main ones. As for aerosols, I just found out in this article that 75% of the UK does accept tin aerosols in the curbside recycling. So it's probably worth putting them in the recycling anyway. A better way to make an impact would be to reduce and reuse. Reducing the things we buy is more impactful. Next, reusing, repurposing and repairing things that already exist before they make it to the recycling bin or landfill. That's why the three R's are in this order. Reduce, reuse, recycle. 
Okay, I also decided to keep the box because I am moving. I'm sure I'll find something to put in it for the move. Another thing I wanted to talk about, tea lights. These are almost 100% recyclable and reusable. So I'll tell you what I do with them, okay? I have a little pot where I collect wax to make my own candle. The problem with these tea lights is they waste so much wax. You see that? It's almost a whole candle is left in there. I don't want to waste all that wax. So what you do, you literally just squeeze them and the wax just breaks up. You can now keep this wax, make your own candle out of it. What's left is this little aluminium case, which I believe is recyclable, along with like tin cans and stuff. This is where the wick was kept. These are just aluminium, so I'm pretty sure you can just chuck these in with your recycling. As far as I'm aware, there you go, 100% reusable, recyclable, or at least if you're not gonna use the wax, like recycle the cups. I've heard that anything smaller than a credit card is less likely to get recycled simply because it can get lost in the sorting process, but I think it's still worth putting them in the recycling anyway. A lot of tea candles come in like bulk, so that's a lot of waste. I've saved a jar from another candle that I had. I just cleaned it out with boiling hot water and that's where I will be putting all my wax when I have enough of it. You can usually find candle wicks really cheap in craft shops. This video is not sponsored, so I'm sponsoring it with my own product. So I wanted to let you know about my very own eco-friendly homemade lip balm available in my Etsy shop below. It's designed to be completely natural, organic where possible, and packaged using recycled materials. I'm about to launch a brand new flavor, Sweet Orange, and these tube versions are for a limited time, so make sure to get yours soon. So this is how I'm using one of the plastic bags just to put some of my Bratz doll accessories. I always need these bags. I've actually got tons of them, which I use just to keep the accessories clean. So yeah, they will be kept in my Bratz archive bin. Right, you'll have to excuse the mess because we're mid packing, but this is now my Yankee candle. I cleaned it out. Uh, it used to be like black on the inside. I got all the wax out. I managed to just stab it with a knife and like crumble it out. But I could put like candy in here or rice or I I could eventually put some more wax in here and make another candle. Okay, so today I've been decluttering my bathroom cabinets and some old things and I've decided to get rid of all these seriously old lip products. Typically, people would throw these in the bin because like they don't know what else to do with them. But Superdrug actually has a makeup recycling point. I'm not sure if they have it at every store, but they have it in the one that I go to. So I've already taken some makeup there before and now I'm going to take these as well. I'm not entirely sure what they do with it or how they recycle it, but it's better than throwing it in the bin. So that's what I will be doing today. So unfortunately, there are some plastic bags that you just can't recycle although well, this one doesn't actually say whether you can recycle it or not usually they have something on the back saying do not recycle if it's not recyclable however these kind of bags like usually for freezer food you can actually recycle these with like um carrier bags recycle with bags at large supermarkets don't recycle at home so these i rinse out and i put them all together that i'm saving to take to the bag recycling but as for these it's kind of a shame but these are like the harder plastic and i don't think you can recycle these if you know if i can recycle these in some way uh leave a comment but unfortunately they're gonna have to go in the bin it's the same with like this salad bag don't recycle so yeah shame so in the UK, many supermarkets do have plastic bag recycling points. My local Asda used to have one, but for some strange reason, they no longer do. I was struggling to find a bag recycling anywhere. So imagine my delight when my local co-op introduced this soft plastic recycling point. Now, yes, it is absolutely tiny, but it's something. I was very surprised to see things like crisp and biscuit packets in this image because this type of plastic usually isn't recyclable like other softer plastics are, but it's right there in the image so I'm very intrigued. If you live near a co-op, make sure to go check out if they have one of these so you can use it. Another thing I always do is to pick the single bananas rather than the bunches because people rarely pick up the single ones and they often go to waste. So save a banana today and take the single ones away. 
Then there's picking the ugly ones, because we're all just the same and just as beautiful on the inside, and I like that this one looks like a snowman. Then of course, buying loose veg in general. I do this when possible, but sadly, most large supermarkets still package an alarming amount of their fruit and veg in plastic, so sometimes the choice just isn't there. I've been really pleased to see more refill versions of products like this hand soap, for example, and generally more conscious packaging. There's still a long way to go, and I'd like to see more brands make this change, so I do buy refills when possible. So recently my hoover stopped hoovering, but rather than throwing it out I wanted to see if I could fix it because they're expensive and they're cumbersome to get rid of. And this is what I discovered when I took it apart. So this has happened a few times with my hoover and it's where the, the band just comes loose. Sometimes it breaks, but yeah, the band comes loose and then it doesn't spin anymore. Okay, so in order to fix this we need to replace the band or just hook it back on. So we're gonna need a screwdriver to unscrew all of these screws. What I did was I found the number on here and I went on eBay or just on Google and Googled a Hoover band with that number and I managed to find the same one. Very inexpensive. So this has come off of here. Hook it onto there. So then we hook it around here and we wanna put it back in. Done. And it's been working for over a year now since I fixed the problem, so I'm very pleased with that. If you like this video, please thumbs it up. When it comes to disposing of other electrical equipment, some councils offer a specific day for curbside pickup, but make sure to check because if you're leaving random stuff out on the street, it's considered fly tipping, which is illegal in most places. The best place to go is your local recycling center or the dump, which I actually really enjoy going to because they will usually have designated disposal points for things that you can't put in your recycling, like wood, metal, electronics, garden waste, large amounts of glass or cardboard, general waste, textile waste and other things like kitchen goods and large home electronics, batteries, printer ink cartridges. I've also noticed battery disposal points in supermarkets like Lidl, sometimes in Boots and also sometimes in train stations and other random places. So make sure you're actually using these disposal points because you're not meant to put batteries in the bin. Also a word on vapes. I do enjoy these but I also realize they're a huge environmental and health issue. You're not actually meant to put them in the bin because they are made of hazardous materials like the battery inside so I don't know how they expect people to know what to do with them once they're done but here's a thing you can do. I take mine apart with pliers, recycle the casing if it's recyclable and I take the battery to a battery disposal point. It's annoying that they don't make them easier to take apart and recycle but this is the only way I can think to responsibly dispose of them if I'm going to continue buying them. I've heard rumours that these are going to get banned soon which would probably be a good thing. Fast fashion. I'm going to be completely honest, I do still buy fast fashion, but I really do try to avoid it for the most part. I especially avoid promoting or collaborating with fast fashion on my channel and social media because I don't want to increase their sales. Do I regret making this video? For the most part, yes. Do I regret buying the clothes? A little, but Bratz is king to me. I will admit this was probably the most excitement that I had that entire year. Yes, I do see the irony here and I'm willing to take whatever you throw at me for being such an effing hypocrite, but I'm still gonna make a video about the environment. With the exception of this monstrosity, for about the last five years on YouTube, I have turned down every single opportunity to get a bunch of free clothes from sites like Shein and stuff. And believe me, it was hard. I freaking love clothes. The temptation is real and I'm not ashamed to say that. I am no saint. There's so much more to be said on the topic of fast fashion, but I'm gonna link some other videos below who say it a lot better. However, my favorite places to buy clothes are charity shops, thrift stores, and all places secondhand because of the amazing things you can find. You can very often find modern and new trendy items too. Plus, it's guilt-free shopping because nothing new was created, you've saved an item from landfill, and your money often goes to charity. You can also donate old and unwanted stuff too. Win-win. 
Okay, I don't know why I feel nervous to do this, like I've been putting it off for so long, but I'm going to finally take my things to the charity shop today. I've partly been putting it off because obviously I can't drive anywhere, so I'm gonna have to walk with uh, all these bags. Uh, so there's quite a lot in there, it's really heavy, and then there's this extra one here. I didn't really wanna do two trips, so I'm gonna try my best to carry all of these and finally get rid of some stuff. Nice empty bag. So what about the clothes that are kind of past it? Like there's holes in it or it's bobbly and it's just not something you can ever see someone wearing again. I recently watched a video where the creator encouraged you not to donate these kind of items because it's almost disrespectful to expect that someone would wear or buy something in such poor condition. And I get that, but here's why you should donate them anyway. I recently volunteered at one of my local charity shops and they had what they called a rag bin which is where they put any clothing or scrappy materials that were past the point of resell. I was concerned about this and I asked what happened to these items and I was so pleased to hear that it actually gets picked up by someone they call the rag man and the shop actually does get paid a small amount by weight I think and then the rag is reused elsewhere. How amazing is that? Just ask if your charity shop accepts rag, I put mine in a separate bag and I label it to make it easier for them to sort out. Another example of reusing and recycling old clothes, I had a pair of old leggings and joggers with holes in the knees and I decided to make them into shorts that I could just wear around the house and I put the scraps in a bag for rag that I can take to the charity shop. You can also find textiles recycling points dotted around. This was one that I found at the dump. Last year I switched to a menstrual cup to reduce my sanitary waste and also to save money in the long run. I got the organic cup because it was one of the cheaper options. It does work for the most part but I do want to try reusable pads as another option. I switched to Salt of the Earth a year ago and I actually bought the completely plastic free version which was like £2.50 from Boots and it somehow just never runs out. It does work for me day to day but some days I do feel I need something stronger like going to the gym for example Example, so I may try some alternatives for those extra smelly days. A smelly smell that smells smelly. Okay, so we're now gonna melt down some wax and make a brand new candle. I actually threw out the other candle when we were moving because I just wasn't sure if I was gonna get around to making the candle. I've got this one, which is cute. I have this little wick, which I'm going to just hold in here and then pour it in when it's done. Okay, so I've used up actually all the wax now, and that is all melted now. This is how I've got the wick to stay in place. It's a little bit last minute because I did not think this through, but it's working, so. So it's the evening now and the candle has set. It has gone a bit weird, like it's sunken and the wick is not in the center, but it's still a candle. So we're gonna light it and see if it works. Here we go! Isn't that so cute? I can't believe it. I made my own candle out of recycled candles. Okay, though I've tried to make this video light-hearted and fun, the reality is it was really hard to make and I didn't choose to show any sensitive footage but researching for this video was really depressing and upsetting. I cried a lot and I questioned myself and the way I live constantly. I think about the declining environment and suffering around the world every single day and it really upsets me and I've had some pretty dark thoughts. There's also a lot I didn't cover in this video like animal cruelty in the farming and fishing industry but it's something I think about all the time. I've nearly finished editing this video and I'm realizing that it's like really just doesn't um it's not even like an accurate picture of like how this planet is and how awful the things that we do to living animals and like people are um so i don't know how i feel about posting this video um but i wanted to acknowledge like i obviously tried to explain in the disclaimer that obviously this is just a silly little video sharing some very tiny random things i do but i do understand that this really isn't accurately depicting 
all the things wrong with the world but if i can do something anything i just wanted to share something i also realize there's a lot that i haven't talked about and that i haven't covered in this video um this video really had no structure it started as a vlog last year and i just wanted to put the footage together and put it out don't have time to add any more in but i do feel nervous about posting it because people are so critical when you post videos about the environment because <laughs> people just rip you apart for all the things that you still continue to do but yeah i just wanted to make an acknowledgement that i know this video is never going to be good enough uh but i'm posting it anyway because i'm running out of time and so is the planet <laughs> Because I know there are so many gaps in this video, I've linked some videos and fantastic documentaries below which give a better overall picture and understanding. There's also so many other things I do, um, so I will probably make another video like this. I don't want to leave this video on a bad note, so I'll end with saying... The world is full of good-hearted people and there are always people that want to help make the world a better place. Please be one of them. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and comment on the video if you want more people to see it. You can follow me on Instagram, Isabella DeMarco, and check out my Patreon for more. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.